Hello everyone, in this video, we're going to have a closer look at the interface inconsistencies that Microsoft still hasn't fixed on Windows 11. Sure, the operating system introduces many, many visual changes, but the company seems to have switched its emphasis on adding more AI features and features that sometimes might not even be complete. So updating all elements has been a secondary aspect for a long time. Microsoft has been updating the legacy elements, but at a very slow pace. And I am sure that some of the elements cannot even be updated due to the limitations of the operating system and its current state. But this is something that the company should have addressed a long time ago. So what I plan to show you is purely my point of view, things that I see every day, and I think the company should have fixed by now. Okay, let's dive into the inconsistencies that are still available on Windows 11. But before, please subscribe to the channel and click the like button to help YouTube show this video to more people. It doesn't cost anything and you will be helping the channel and supporting my work. One of the changes with Windows 11 was the introduction of the new context menu that includes a completely new design. However, in 2024, the menu is still not fully implemented, or at least not the way it should, as you still have to access the legacy design using an extra step to access the many of the missing legacy options. Also, the context menu is not consistent throughout the operating system since you can still find different menu designs. For example, you will access the legacy version of the context menu in certain apps. Let's look at the Windows Terminal for example. This is considered a modern application, but when you right click the title bar, you will still access the old context menu. And for example, in the registry, it will be the same thing. Another example that I can show you is the context menu for Microsoft Edge. Yes, it looks like with the modern design, but it doesn't exactly match the design for Windows 11. But this is the closest that we're going to get with the web browser. Also, if we look at the context menu for OneDrive, we can see that it has a modern design, but for example, the Mika material is not present on this particular interface. Even when we open the settings menu, we're going to have find some elements that matches the Windows 11 design, but it is not exactly the same menu that we see throughout the operating system. Finally, I also have to call out the power user menu the menu that opens up when you right click the start button. And this menu includes Mika material, rounded corners, and the new design language, but it is a plain menu. But in my opinion, Microsoft could have done this much better by simply adding icon next to each item to make it easier to understand. The operating system also includes many rendering issues for certain applications. Uh, for example, when you click the install button from a web page from the web version of the Microsoft Store to actually open the installation process on Windows, you're going to see some rendering issues. As you can see, now it's just taking too long for us to see the option to install the app. And let me close this and click the install button again. And you will see now that we have a different experience that jumps all over the place. And you can see that in the background, it's opening the Microsoft Store the full version, and then we only get the small version of the interface to install the application. Now, let me show you another example. When you open the Windows Terminal, for example, and you close the application, you're going to see an after effect that stays in the screen for a moment, which I don't think is a big deal, but it still shows some rendering inconsistencies. And that's it. You saw that? So now let me open that again, and you're going to see the after effect. Did you ever notice command prompt flashing windows appearing when you're signing into your account. These are also rendering issues. Ideally, startup scripts and different commands should run hidden. However, this is not just the operating system's fault. Some applications might inject some script that must run a startup, but the system should be able to hide them if they're not important for the user because they should stay for a millisecond and then they go away. We can also find some UI inconsistency when switching from the light to the dark color mode. So let me show you that if I open the settings app, and then go to personalization and then I just switch to the dark theme and if you have open file explorer you're going to see some inconsistencies in the interface so you actually need to restart the application in order to fix this. Since I have switched to the dark mode, let's talk about this color mode. Although I usually set the color mode to light, many users prefer the dark mode. Unfortunately, even after many updates, Windows 11 still 
doesn't have a proper color mode that expands across the entire experience, as many of the elements on File Explorer and across the operating system doesn't have a proper dark mode. So let's say that we want to open the properties from a specific folder or a file. We're going to see the legacy experience for the properties of that element that doesn't align with the design language of Windows 11. Even if we open other legacy applications, let's say control panel, for example, even the start menu right now, as I'm recording this video, I didn't know this was a thing. You can see that the dot mode didn't apply correctly. So if we open control panel, we do get some dot mode, but it's not fully implemented. If we go to the registry, we're not going to see anything remotely to a dark mode. Computer management, also no dark mode. And we can go through many of the legacy applications. They do not have the proper dark mode design. Even if we go to the Windows tools, not only the dark mode is not properly implemented, but also we can see that we're accessing the legacy version of File Explorer to access these icons. Even further, Windows 11 doesn't even have an option to switch between the light and the dark mode automatically throughout the day. Apple's Mac OS has this feature and it works great. The control panel has been around for many, many years and is still present in the current version of the operating system. Microsoft has proactively been trying to port many of the features to the settings app. However, it has been trying since the original release of Windows 10 back in 2015. The problem with inconsistency here is that you still have two applications to change the system settings. And when configuring some features from the settings app, you still have to access the legacy experience to configure that particular feature, adding unnecessary confusion to the end user. Let's say that we are in the settings app and then we need to change some settings and we click this button, we're going to get to the page to configure more options, but that is the control panel legacy design. Don't get me wrong, it is still good that we have quick access to the settings in control panel, but all these properties should already be built into the settings app. Although the settings app has been designed to be the primary experience to configure features and changing the appearance of Windows 11, it is also another case of inconsistency since many of the pages still retain the design style of Windows 10. For example, if we go to the privacy and security settings, if we go to the search permissions page, we're going to see that the page still retains the design style that we used to see for the settings app for Windows 10. Now, Microsoft also been updating the settings app and on future releases of the operating system, we're going to see more pages getting updated, which is a good thing. But right now, it is another aspect of inconsistency. On Windows 11, some system applications and components still do not align with the design language, or you will find many inconsistencies. For example, on Microsoft Edge, the menu has been updated too much closely with the design of Windows 11, but the browser itself, like the frame, do not include blur or transparency effects. So by now, the browser should at least have a frame that matches more closely with the design of Windows 11, as we can see in Notepad and on File Explorer. Although the operating system includes a modern version of File Explorer, a modern version of File Explorer, the app still has many inconsistencies. For instance, it still relies on legacy elements to change settings. We can see this if we open the folder options. As you can see, we're still using the legacy interface to change settings. Also, if we have to access tools from File Explorer, let's say that we want to use the format interface, we're going to see that we're still using the legacy version of the format that hasn't been updated for a very, very long time. In addition, since not all the options are available through the modern context menu, you still have to go through an extra step to access the legacy context menu to find other options. Even more, Windows 11 still includes many legacy applications. I can understand the need for some apps to maintain compatibility. However, by now, we should have tools that can manage modern and legacy features. Microsoft is already deprecating tools like Warpad and Step Recorder and integrating many features from the legacy tools into the settings app, such as the ability to manage drives and partitions. However, many of the tools still remain untouched. Some examples include the Event Viewer, Registry, 
Performance Monitor, Resource Monitor, System Information, and Task Scheduler. Furthermore, some legacy applications may even include elements from even older version of the operating system back to Vista and even older version. For example, if I go to the computer management console and want to create a volume on this drive, you're going to see that we have this right here. This is an element from the Windows Vista era. However, in this specific case, we know that if we go to the settings app and then we go to the storage settings, we can access the updated version of the disk management tools, which in the settings app, it just called disks and volumes. Now we're going to look into the recovery tools. We are also going to find some inconsistencies as well. For instance, instead of the Windows Recovery environment, we can still see that the interface is still stuck on the Windows 10 design style with the blue background and white fonts. I'm not expecting a complex interface makeover since it will require more resources and components that are not necessary in this environment. However, the interface should be similar to the out-of-box experience visuals without fancy animations when, when we jump between the different pages, as you can see right here. Not that, but I'm talking about more about the frame and elements like buttons, fonts, and more. I know I just said that I would like to see this design on the recovery environment. However, on the out of box experience, we can also find a few things that they need to be improved as well. For example, the scroll bar is still stuck on the old design. Also, when we go through the different pages, we're going to find some inconsistencies and little things that can be improved with a little bit of design. For example, the add layout option is a simple link. With a little styling, this option can look a little bit better. And I am not a UX designer, but this deployment doesn't look right. From this interface, we can also see that the design for this button is not correct. The padding is not right. I know this is just going too much into details, but it shows that it needs a little bit of improvement. Now, back into the uh, Windows recovery experience, if we look a little bit deeper, we can also see that if we access different different tools, we are going to get an interface that uses the old design style. An example I can show you is the System Restore that still uses a design that dates back to Windows 7. Even the image recovery tool. It is important to take a step back and recognize also that Microsoft might never update all the tools and some of the tools might even disappear in the future. Like for example, the uh, Windows Backup System, the legacy version that is still available on Windows 11, but that is a deprecated feature. However, there are some tools like Command Prompt that it will be nice if Microsoft switched the interface to the Windows Terminal because that's supposed to be the replacement for the command consoles. I am not going to get too deep into safe mode because this is an environment that loses just the necessary services and applications so you can troubleshoot your system, but you're also going to find some inconsistencies. For example, if you need to troubleshoot some issues with the operating system and you want to use the settings app, you can use it, but to a certain point. For example, if you go to Windows Update, you will not be able to check for updates, for example. Also, Microsoft wants you to use the Windows Terminal as a replacement for Command Prompt, but if you want to use that on safe mode, that is not possible. As you can see, I just tried to open the terminal and it doesn't open. So you still have to use the legacy version of command prompt. One thing that I wanted to point out specifically to safe mode is that if you need to access this particular environment to uninstall and update, you can actually use the Windows R to open the run command and then use the ms-settings windows update and history. This should open the update history page. And from here, you can access the settings to uninstall updates. I think save mode should include the entry to access 
the page to uninstall updates more easily. So in conclusion, Windows 11 is a modern operating system with a modern interface, and it introduces many new features that sets the operating system apart from other versions. However, there are still many functionalities and design inconsistency throughout the system. Windows still mixes the old with the new elements, the dark mode does not apply everywhere, and menus do not align across the experiences. You will find rendering issues here and there, and there is still a lot of confusion with the settings app since the control panel and many other legacy components still exist. Microsoft has been addressing many inconsistency problems, but not at a rapid pace. And considering that version 24H2 could be the last major update, it is clear that not every issue will be fixed in this version. I wish the company will use a different approach. Instead of continuously pushing features in AI integration, I think Microsoft should dedicate some feature update specifically to only include interface changes and fully align the experience with the Windows 11 design language. And that is all that I have to say about the Windows UI inconsistency at this moment. Remember to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet, and I just hope this video was informative for you, and I would like to thank you for viewing.